Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As you already know, this is your U.S. General 5-Draw 2-Cart with side tray and deep compartment. Today is Tuesday. As you can see, just made it over to the storage unit to finish up um, a few mods. Okay, so, you know, I figured, you know, I'd just shoot a little footage real quick just to give you an update, show you how things is coming along. All right. Um, there's a few things that I changed up. I don't know whether... You noticed or not but I am gonna point them out in a hot second but as always stayed as usual I always keep my signature lingering somewhere in the background my Dunkin Donuts coffee you already know okay so yeah like I said it you know just finishing and touching up on a few um, mods as you can see, I did change the colors um, to the shocks, as you can see, all right, to the red on black, um, just as well as I did um, apply the perma grip down to the bottom portion of the Husky Magnetic Cordless Tool Organizer, all right? If you follow the videos, you would know that I also laid out some drawers. I don't have um, all the drawers laid out at this prior moment because I'm still undecided, you know, what I'm about to do with the top of the chest. There is some um, things that I want to switch up at the top of the chest just as well as I want to alleviate um, some space to my bottom drawer, okay, because I do carry um, blow molded cases in this cart that take up some space, you know, in the bottom drawer even though there is a lot of tools um, technically in this cart, okay. But, you know, if you haven't been following up on the videos, as you can see, the drawers are meshed off with the Husky Perma Grip. Okay, just as well is up underneath the tray. Okay, and as you can see, the whole cart is basically um, lined off, just as well as the Perma Grip is applied um, to the handle towards the right hand side of the cart. Okay, I'm a um spin the cart around so that you can get a good bird's eye view you know um at the prior moment uh when it comes to these modifications like i stated in my last uh video you know when i would be at work i never really had the time to get around to you know switching up some things which i have more of them quite a few ideas okay so you know to those out there that's interested they may possibly um need the information I'm gonna go back into some previous mods that I did in the earliest times of me actually purchasing this card just as well as I had the four draw US general tool card also okay um for the individuals out there who basically either own this card or a card that's somewhat similar to it all right in design um I still notice there are individuals out there who have a hard time and a hard issue with storing their long pry bars and extensions and ratchets and so on and so forth when it comes um, to the screwdriver side compartments and things like that of that nature. The solution um, to that issue is, is that you need a Milwaukee number 12 step bit, okay, to bore out the holes um, in the side compartments and when doing so you have to drill from up underneath the compartments, okay to establish the uh, proper hole sizes. Once you are able to do that, then you know you can fit whatever um, long extensions, long ratchets, and long pry bars in your tool chest, and you'll have um, good access and clearance you know, to the front top lid. Um, just to give you an example, okay, as you can see, at these first three right here, these are pry bars that initially um, I couldn't close the top lid, okay, and those holes was bored with the number 12 step bit, as you can see right there, okay. So as you can see, now they're flushed and all three of them are basically fitting to this corner. Um, in this card, I do need to bore out two other holes. Okay, um, possibly to this side, or I just may do it to this side. I'm um, technically not too sure at the prior moment, but that is a solution, okay, to you storming your pry bars, all right? So, you know, that's for the individuals out there who still having a hard time with not being able to close their top lid, all right? Give you a good look, 
you know, how I did the shocks. Okay. Just as well as, you know, side tray. But I'm going to spin the card around real quick so that you can get a basic, uh, good bird's eye view. And we're going to dive right into it. All right. So just give me a second and we're going to get to it. So walk with me. Let's get it. Okay. So to give you, you know, a little nice bird's eye view of the side of the cart. Okay. And how, um, things is technically looking okay at the bottom compartment the gorilla glue is um still drying at the moment all right so what you're seeing um with the little white blemishes it's not on the outer surface it's actually on the line and so that's how it looks you know before it dries but when it fully dries it will basically look like the top and how um the side handles are okay um when i did the side handles I doubled up on the normal standard foam draw liner. Okay, so it's a little extra thick on the handles, as you can see. All right, just to give you a, a close view at that so that you can see how I did that. Okay. So, yeah, you know, that's basically um, how that's coming out at the moment. Like I stated, um, I do possibly may have an idea where that, you know, I may apply a little bit of it um, towards the front of the cart when it comes to some of the drawers, okay? You know, and some people's modifications, what they do is they take out the drawers and um, what they do is they paint the drawers, okay? Um, I don't feel no need to do any painting. Even with the Gorilla Glue adhesive spray um, that I'm using, okay? I do have a chemical that just hypothetically speaking, say for instance, I was to discard this um, cart and say whoever was buying it, um, how I have the cart customed and say it wasn't of, you know, their desired um, means, you know, to have some of the things that I actually have on the cart. I actually have a solution that actually cleans up the adhesive Gorilla Glue. Um, I've already tested it, and what's funny is is that I just happened to notice it on a humble um, because when I was first um, applying it to my side tray, I was getting a little overspray here and there because when I first was using it, you know, it's a Gorilla spray adhesive. So when you use the can and you spray it, you got to be mindful that when the spray comes out of its nozzle, the nozzle tip dries a little bit, okay, after use. So I didn't take notice to that so that when I went to spray and used the item again, it was given a little overspray. What I used to um, remove the overspray from certain areas, once again, is the same thing that I use to clean my comfort grips of all my handles of my ratchets and um, my screwdrivers, okay, just as well as some of my cordless tools, which is uh, rubber repair tire prep. Okay, because rubber repair tire prep removes all sorts of debris and grease and grime and things of that nature and it separates it quick, let alone you don't necessarily have to um, wipe, it automatically dries on its own. So when I just happened to notice that, you know, it gave me the idea of, you know, just hypothetically speaking, say um, I was cutting something out and I laid it in properly and, you know, you would normally assume you know with gorilla glue it's going to stick hard especially like on a black paint and then it's, it's going to be very noticeable and then it may be hard to remove but like i said this is how i actually came across it and it actually worked without no problem and it didn't dull in the paint or anything like that so just to um put that idea you know what i'm saying out there and give you that information you know just in case if you didn't know that or not okay because that is um, a chemical that I basically use to keep my tools clean. You know, a lot of people who look from the outside in on these videos, you know, there's been times where people have asked me in comments, do I even use my tools or do I just collect tools? They don't follow the video, so they never realize or 
happened to notice that this cart wasn't always at a storage unit, that this cart was actually in a professional shop and my tools was being used, you know, 365 days of the year, six days out of the week consistently. But the thing is, is that when I'm working, you know, I use latex gloves. I wear, I wear latex gloves. And a lot of times I have on impact gloves. Most um, mechanics, most technicians, they don't technically like wearing gloves. Okay. Um, I feel in my performance of work, I'm more aggressive when I actually have gloves on. Okay. When it comes to certain applications, but there are times in my jobs where the gloves actually do come off depending upon what the situation is. Okay. So, you know, just once again, just to give you a little close look, you know what I'm saying, at the side, and we're going to dive right in. Let's get to it. Okay, just to give you, you know, a back-end shot of the cart with the lid up, all right? A lot of times I never uh, give this actual shot right here so that you can see how things is lined out with the trimming all the way around, Okay. Okay, and once again, you know, this is up underneath um, the side tray compartment, okay? Okay. So as you can see, you know how everything is trimmed out from the side tray and towards um, the subframe and the body of the cart, okay? Just as well is the upper um, lid. Okay, so pretty much, you know, that's what it's hitting for at the prior moment, you know, when it comes to the modifications. Um, like I stated, you know, if you don't follow the videos, you know, there's a lot of information, there's a lot of creative things that, you know, I'm into other than me just, you know, doing automotive service repairs. Like, I'm very artistic and creative in other areas, okay? So I will be bringing a lot of that um, to the table when it comes to this channel, you know, as the channel um, tends to grow and as I move along in each day, you know, when I do decide on my spare time, when, you know, um, recording and things of that nature, you know, as far as being a creator here on YouTube, okay? Um, but when it comes to this US General 2 cart, like, this is just something simple and light, you know, in my way of thinking and how I uh, perform certain work and things like that. And, you know, I don't know, maybe it looks a little bit too much, but not for nothing, I'm just now getting started on this cart. Like, by the time this cart is basically done, you would not have believed or ever even thought that this cart even came from a Harbor Freight, okay? So, you know, I know that they have the Harbor Freight projects out there and things like that. There's a lot of different people, you know, who do modifications in, to their own um, desired specification and things like that. But there are different um, looks that I'm going to give this cart, you know, to fit my applications and things of that nature. Like I said, um, you know, I have the Husky Magnetic Coilers tool organizer to the side of the cart. That's mainly more for um, my pneumatic impact guns, which are all Ingersoll ran. Okay. But I do actually have 12 to 13 different guns but I can only mount nine of them, okay, to the cart. So initially my plan was was to actually mount two of the Husky Magnetic Cordless Tool Organizers towards the back of the cart. That idea with me is still kind of up in the air, even though I actually have the second one at hand at the moment. But the reason why I'm having a change of heart in doing that particular modification is because I did happen to come across another... Um, magnetic cordless tool organizer, okay, that actually fits the amount of guns, you know, I think it fits five towards, towards the back. It fits either five or it fits six, but it doesn't just fit five or six. It actually fits some of my most biggest um, guns, okay? So that's why I may um, happen to switch that up, all right? Okay, and I also did state you know, um, not just let alone with uh, mounting the cordless tool organizers towards the back of the cart. That is a modification um, at the prior moment that actually needs to be put on standstill because these casters, I want to change um, these casters 
which are, I believe, six inch casters to eight inch casters, high performance casters that actually have red wheels. Okay. And they're swiveled on all four just as well as they have the locking mechanism for all four wheels. Okay. So that's another thing because, you, as you can see, I have the side tray towards um, the side of the cart. Then I already have a cordless tool organizer to the opposite side of the cart. So technically, in order for me to switch the casters, okay, either I would have to disassemble the top chest or actually take all the tools out and lay the cart towards its back and side because I don't want to lay the cart on the front side of where the drawers are located, okay, because I don't need the drawers getting damaged due to the fact of me wanting to change um, the casters. So this process right here, when it comes to the casters, are technically first before mounting um, the cordless tool organizers to the back. You know, you want to work smart. You don't want to work hard. Okay, so things is a process, you know, baby steps. But like I said, as I go along, you will see those changes, okay? When I'm basically finished, you will not see, you know, another cart in the same design, you know, because everybody has their own unique ideas, okay, in their specification as far as what they do and how they go about doing it, all right? So into this next tool haul, next tool review, everybody enjoy the rest of your day out there, okay? This is a fresh week. Always keep it positive and safe. And into the next one, we're going to check you later. Peace.